Percy Dorolo from Vox Machina, the first campaign of the very, very popular Dozens and Dragons 5th edition actual play Critical Role, is kind of an, I, I say iconic, uh, maybe better put archetypal, archetypical, archetypal character. Uh, he's might be the most anime of the original Vox Machina uh, characters. Um, if you've seen the first season of The Legend of Vox Machina, the animated show around uh, part of the first campaign, it is very Percy-centric and goes into his backstory. I won't spoil anything for you, but I do think he's an interesting character to look at from a Pathfinder 2E perspective because he was originally a Pathfinder 1st Edition character. If you didn't realize, Critical Role started out as a home game of Matthew Mercer and the rest of the Vox Machina gang, and they were playing Pathfinder 1st Edition because that's what Matt enjoyed playing and what he knew to play. Uh, and they made the decision to convert from Pathfinder to D&D 5th Edition uh, for probably... Uh, viewer reasons knowing that fifth edition was going to be easier to follow along and understand for people brand new to the hobby than 3.5 slash pathfinder uh but that left the gang with the challenge percy was a gunslinger gunslinger was not a class in uh it still isn't a class in 5th edition. So Matt Mercer created what is probably the most popular and widely accepted homebrew uh, in 5th edition. And he created the Gunslinger subclass. It is available on drive through RPG. Um, and you can play it yourself. It is a fighter subclass. It is uh, very... Powered. I, I struggle to say overpowered because, um, you know, it, it has been continued. It was continued to be balanced over the course of uh, maybe like a couple of years. It was Matt's first attempt at 5e homebrew, and he admits he did not have a full grasp on the system when building it because, of course, like, why would he? Um, and so it, it definitely got better over time. But I thought it might be a fun experiment to kind of look at what Percy as a character would look like in second edition. And I went in, I maybe took a left turn that I think uh, may, might make this a little bit more interesting than just, yeah, here's a level 10 gunslinger build that I, I called Percy Dorolo. I actually did something a little different. Let me fire up, uh, fire up path builder here we go so as you can see i actually went with uh a inventor class um and i did this for a couple of reasons um and again i i have no exposure to pathfinder first edition so i don't know what the gunslinger class looked like in that game i am converting Percy Dorolo as a 5th edition fighter and maybe even really playing into the fiction of who he was as a character over mechanics trying to replicate it out, you know, one to one. So, which is the reason why I went inventor. Percy is a high intelligence character who was very known for his crafting, his tinkering. He was always coming up with these kind of elaborate plans like custom built items and stuff that Matt kind of had to like, sometimes, sometimes he said, yes, like let's roll for it and see what happens. Other times kind of had to like him and Talison, the player behind Percy kind of had to work on, okay, I, I see what you're going with this. Like, but I, I'm not really sure how, you know, this is bring him back down to reality for a moment. But I think the inventor in second edition is perfect for Percy because that's at the end of the day, that's what Percy was in fiction. Percy Dorolo invented the black powder firearm. Like he was the first one to create it. It did not exist in the world before he came around and invented it or 
uh, if I'm remembering, or maybe was uh, partially influenced by some other uh, another person's plans that were not finished and didn't work yet, and he kind of finished it and kind of brought it to its final form. And um, a quick spoiler warning for, but I don't think it's too breaking. But the the he tries to protect the technology. He does not want that technology spread to anybody else. He recognizes how dangerous it is, but he needs it for his own personal gain that is mostly altruistic, but not always. Um, and the technology does get out. And that's how black powder and firearms kind of get released into Exandria, the world of Critical Role. Um, so, But I really wanted to focus on that. He, While Percy went absolutely ham in combat with both both his uh, uh, pepper box wrote with rotating um, uh, rotating barrels but also his custom like basically long range like a sniper rifle that he called bad news um, and I really wanted to focus on that uh, the the fiction of him being an inventor and a tinkerer over him just being a, a gun wielder none of the ways uh, for the gunslinger class felt very Percy to me. I tried building out a, a gunslinger. It just didn't feel true to the fiction of the character. So I landed uh, on a inventor, though I am using the free archetype and giving him the gunslinger dedication um, to give him a little bit of um, added stuff with the gun and honestly like it, it might not be necessary i don't think you necessarily need the gunslinger dedication to um make this build work um i don't know if it would be perfectly um i don't know if it would be perfect well no because i think i started out with the flintlock pistol which while it is uncommon I think you could still use it in like a Pathfinder, uh, a Pathfinder Society game. Um, and as long as your DM is cool with uh, giving you access to, to guns and not, while not being a gunslinger, I don't know if you necessarily need the gunslinger dedication. But this is kind of the build that I've got going on. Um, and I won't spend a ton of time. I, I honestly, I did go back and forth on what his background would be. I opted for royalty in order to, you know, optimize him a little bit around the intelligence for him. But there was, uh, like, if you know any of his backstory, he is haunted a little bit. He does have a otherworldly, otherworldly, not necessarily a patron, but does kind of sign a contract and make a deal with a... I can't remember if it's a devil or a demon specifically, but a a evil uh, other world other worldly creature. Um, and I, there is a background that felt very cool for that, but was not really optimized. the 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 choices there um, weren't ideal. Um, and I think that's that kind of stuff you can just put in your backstory. If if you were looking to play a Percy type character with a similar like, and you wanted to mimic that backstory, you could absolutely just put in your backstory, talk with your GM before a session one, and you know give him give them access to that part of your story with some unknowns and easily bring that into the story. I just felt giving him the royalty background is still very accurate to him gives and gave him the proper, I think, um, access, uh, to the, an intelligence boost, etc. Um, I've already got him at level 10. I can, we can, sh I can bring it down to level six just so that you can see kind of where we start. Um, gave him the skilled heritage. He really was a skilled monkey in um and i really do i think that is part for the um uh part for the course in uh if in character in fiction for him he's basically at least trained in all of the charismatic uh all the charismatic skills like deception diplomacy intimidation definitely crafting i gave him training in occultism um, because of that backstory piece, 
um, definitely trained in society. And then, you know, he ended up being trained in things like acrobatics, arcana, stealth, thievery, kind of as we kind of move through, um, which I think is is fun. Um, now, like, I, there might be a different kind of heritage that, you know, might be more fun, but I really do like, um, I, he, he is a straight up human um though easily could be changed out for something else if you prefer playing something uh a little less vanilla in that in that way um gave him the uh, natural ambition because this felt very percy too to be able to give him a second first level class feat so gave him that he he starts out with both the haphazard repair and the built-in tools um inventor feats obviously starting with the we the the weapon um, innovation and the complex simplicity, uh, modification, initial modification in order to increase the damage of a, a easily accessible flintlock pistol. Um, depending on if you change up your ancestry and get access to a better starting weapon, you might not necessarily need that, but when it came to initial modifications, this is the one that made the most sense. Blunt shot was another option, but just didn't. I mean, I, I, I'm not entire. Well, it says it's for simple weapons, but I th I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is a simple weapon. So depending on where you go, that might just not be, you know, might not be right for you. But that's kind of where I started off. I also gave him a quick rapier because I do end up giving him Way of the Drifter with the Gunslinger dedication and, and take a feat to give him that, uh, the, I forget what the exact feat is. Is it uh, the Sword and Pistol Gunslinger feat at level four? Just to give him some melee options, um, because he did occasionally get into melee um, and did use a rapier, rarely, kind of, but he is built... Uh, to do that but honestly like if you wanted to just not do that you easily could like you can check out his set abilities and i do have his decks his second highest you could easily trade out decks for charisma um and go plus three charisma plus one decks and just not really well no you still need the decks for um your the the to hit with your pistols so i'll probably stick stick it with that um but yeah, and so like we can kind of just quickly look and see, you know, gunslinger dedication with the free archetype. Um, I went ahead and gave him assurance on his crafting for you know all the inventor stuff like that. I feel like that's a really like quick and easy like level two pull that um, seems smart, especially for things like overdrive that uh, gives you some extra damage output in combat, but you have to make a crafting check. Assurance just makes it a lot easier to handle that. Gave him access to all chemical ca crafting because he really was a tinkerer. Um, being able to craft um, uh, more black powder E things if you wanted to just seems like an easy thing to do. I wasn't actually sure if it didn't seem clear to me that if inventors actually got access to things like alchemical crafting without having to take a feat, it seems like they should, but I don't think they do. Pathbuilder let me take it. It didn't say that it was redundant. And looking through archives of Nethys, it, it, it's not always super clear to me when reading archives of Nethys since everything is a little spread out. Um, but definitely felt like at level three, like giving him... Um, uh, chemical crafting made the most sense and then um we'll just finish up real quick and i'll show you the level 10 again um i just got him i don't even have him armored i think i just forgot to give him armor if i'm being honest probably want to give him with his uh decks honestly well actually now at this level i wonder if his armor would go down um no he would get a plus one um so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know but um how do i 
numbers. Yeah, there you go. So, um, leather, and I'm I'm still working on like figuring out some of these optimized builds. I kind of I did do this on my own. I didn't like look up things on like RPG Bot or any other forums. So the, it, it might be that I didn't pick specifically like the most ideal version of what this could be where he could end up at by level 10 um this was kind of my first first run um at going like high level replicating a fictional character that i like a lot and um could see kind of an interesting path that might be interesting for for content but um you know gay uh, the clockwork celerity feat um overdrive allies and intimidating glare skill feat ancestry feats were a little hard just because as I, I mean being human i don't know if there was anything that really stood out to me as something that was like super obvious like starting to get to like level nine ended up giving my hardy traveler that one i mean i don't know uh, but definitely for offensive boost went electricity. He at later on in the campaign, he ends up, I think building himself a like magical gauntlet that can absorb, uh, like absorb electricity and he can kind of like spend it. It's like an Iron Man type thing to do electric damage. So being able to do the jolt electricity offensive boost seemed very on brand, um, and then gave and it got him magical crafting at level ten, though Percy in fiction was very much a um, did not necessarily he didn't think magic was a crutch, but at the same time he was amazed by what other people could do with magic. He felt very strongly that his strengths lay elsewhere. But I do think that in just in a game running it, being able to build some simple magical items and start working with runes and blah, 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 all that good stuff. Um, you could, he would absolutely have some fun. I didn't even do anything with like runes or anything like that. So just know that like, this isn't super optimized. Like with this, I didn't even like up, uh, build up like any additional weapons for him. Um, so, you know, not optimized. I was mainly looking at, like, in fiction and, like, class feats and stuff like that. But here's kind of where I lined it up. I think it's pretty cool. I'll put a, uh, I'll, I'll create a share link and put it in the doobie-doo if you wanted to take a look. Definitely critique. I'm definitely open to, like, if you think that there was a better way or if you have some notes or just in general you want to share things with the uh, people watching this video. It's like, hey, if you end up doing something like this, I, you know, check out this feat or this weapon or this ancestry gives you something really, really cool. Um, would love to hear um, some similar builds kind of based off this concept. Uh, if there's any other fans out there who'd be interested in this kind of thing. And I have a couple other characters that I um, want to kind of take a crack at potentially building out. Some that are in the fantasy realm. Percy is kind of easy onboarding. Literally used to be a path builder character, but kind of want to build some like not like not even maybe strictly fantasy um, style uh, characters that might just be kind of interesting. So um, if you like this video, leave a uh, thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, you can subscribe. And uh, I'll be back soon with more path builder content. Um, and let me know in the comments if there's anything specific that you'd love to see from me. Kind of trying to carve out a, a niche here in the community. I haven't played nearly as much as other folks in the community. Haven't played. Um, I'm not as good a like theory crafter as as folks like No Nats or Rules Lawyer. But uh, I'm enjoying making the content. It's a lot of fun, and I am enjoying running the game for my game group that we don't get to play as often and I'm, I'm starting to explore what it might look like for me to like play in a game um run run online since i don't have anybody local that's running pathfinder 2e uh, currently so um if i end up with some stories there i will absolutely turn it into content but anyway thanks for watching this video hope you have a great day peace